This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the Mayhem Underground Podcast, otherwise known as... The Midweek War! Or I formerly known as, but we still got our, our thing in there. You got your cue. That's that's what counts. That's what counts. Borg, I never miss my cue. That's why they call me One Take Mike. Nope. Who? Okay. I'm at Sorgatron. Uh, Mike Sorg here in the uh, Sorgatron Media Studios in... Uh, Pencil, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Where are we at? Anyways, no, I'm mad because I should be at a movie right now because movie passes down again. But anyways, we're here and we're doing the podcast and we are live and hello and we're glad you joined us because with us from Pooh, Kipsy, New York, from a secret undisclosed bunker uh, avoiding the reptile tribe, it is Mad Mike. Yes, I've actually taken up residence with the feline tribe right now. Oh, there is feline officially... Tribe. There yeah. is officially a feline tribe, isn't there? Yeah, I'd like to. Um, I'd like to think that my my girlfriend's cats are named Prince Puma and like Lindsay Dorado, but they're not, unfortunately. There you go. But anyways, there was a lucha underground. We're back to the swing of things. We're watching shows within oh, twenty four hours of when it comes out. Yes, uh, uh, it, it, it felt it felt good. Felt good to be back knowing that we were going to talk about it the day after Sorg. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so Sorg, we're going to do this the way that we do all other episodes, except the ones where we have to pack in a couple shows at once. Sorg, qual es tu palabra para Lucha Underground? My word for this week is love. <laughs> all right, all right. I was going to say something similar to that. So Sorry. I will go. I will the com- the complete opposite direction, and I will say um, seduction. <laughs> wow! Yeah. Wow! Yeah that 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 voice was for you, ladies. Mm-hmm. Didn't want to hear. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I went with the opening of the show. You went with the closing of the show. It's fine. It's fine. Everything is okay. Everything is okay. Yeah, everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. Absolutely. Um, The Mayhem team. Yeah, Uh, This show kind of, it built up Mm -hmm. in a weird way, didn't it? Mm -hmm. A little bit. All right. Uh, So, Sorg, ¿Cuál es tu bueno para Lucha Underground? Oh, jeez. Are you going to go with the obvious or are you going to go with the other obvious? I'll leave the obvious for you if you want it. Sork, you do whatever you want. There's a few obvious goods. I mean, the obvious good is the is the Macho Man inspired, um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's the most pimp way to ask someone. They there. even played the Macho Man music afterwards. Gotta love that public domain, Sorg. Yeah, that's true. That is true. And he, and, he, the, and he picked Ty up like it was the end of WrestleMania goddamn four. He did. And we had the the the, the awesome like kind of closure of of, of... And Sorg. 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 Do you know the best part? Hmm. Do you want to know the best part? Hmm. Do you know who Macho Man was feuding with around the time of the marriage? I know I I will tell you exactly who because when I it is when I started wrestling, <gasps> it, the goddamn snake Robert Jake the Snake. You're right. I in in a perfect world, and again, I do not know if this would ever happen. I know someone might be listening that could maybe make this happen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If there is an ancient master of the reptile tribe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Jake the fucking Snake Roberts. What the hell are we even doing? <laughs> we had the Honky Tonk Man, and if they could deal with the Honky Tonk Man, I think they can deal with Jake for a cameo. I, ju- I just... Like, I just want someone in the Reptile Tribe to establish the DDT as a finisher. Mm-hmm. I'll even just take that. Like, I'll just accept that as like, oh, okay, we know what we're doing here. What do you think... 
and this is out of line, and I don't know if it's an answer for something later. What do you think of Jeremiah Snake? Um, I thought it was really cobbled together mm -hmm. until I remembered that the reptile tribe stole his coffin at the end of Three Way to the Grave. Ah. I completely forgot about that, and then I was like, why did they pick Jeremiah Crane? And then I was like, oh. Now I have an issue with the name. Jeremiah's Snake, I don't think it's very creative. No, no, not really. No, it's really <laughs> not. Like, we could have done something else. Mm -hmm. Like, literally anything else. Listen, it's been it's been four seasons. Listen, yeah, no, listen. I, it's been four seasons. The creative it's not juices. Often that they misstep. It's I mean, not often they misstep. They, yeah, it, it, if that is the worst thing that happens, we're good. Yeah, exactly. Like, Jeremiah, like I get it. A crane is an animal. A snake is an animal. Sure, I get it. But at the same time, how about? Solomon. <laughs> oh, hey, from the chat room, Alex Cars is out there on the West Coast. And he says, happiest ending for a Lucha Underground ever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I... um, uh, excuse me. The proposal was not the ending. So I'm going to go with a hard no on that. <laughs> <laughs> a hard fucking no, Alex. That is true. That is I'm going to go with a hard no on that. The happiest ending for a Lucha Underground ever was when the unlikely trio won the trio's championship. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Cotton that is the happiest ending. And then, of course, continuity is Lucha's forte, Mad Mike, but you already know that. Of course, absolutely. Um, God, there's so much. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick a less obvious good. I'm going to pick a less obvious good. And I'm going to say the interaction between uh, Joey Ryan and Exolicious. Yeah. I loved it. I this loved it. So much. So this it was the greatest is, thing. This is the second time we've had a weird, like, interest obsession thing happening with Exolicious. Uh huh. And it's, it's on opposite ends of the spectrum, too. Like, it. All right. And this may be just because I watched NXT today, too. Mm -hmm. It feels like a darkest timeline version of the Velveteen Dream EC3 feud. Ooh. Ooh, I like it. I'm not caught up with NXT to know the reference on that side of things yet, but um, but I can kind of see that. Yeah. Um, sort watch NXT. I'm, I'm trying. Uh, no, 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 I got through like three episodes like yesterday oh, or the day man. before. Yeah. They, did, they did a segment with Velveteen and EC3. Sorry, I got to roll back. I got to roll back. Uh, our friend Brian, uh, that that we've we've gotten into wrestling since we've been here uh -huh. in the studio, um, he started watching... From Takeover Chicago on, oh. on, on my suggestion, and I and I think I had told huh. him just to, just watch the Takeovers. Huh? Fair. He's watching all of it. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Sorg, I just got my tickets for Brooklyn. Oh my! I couldn't get my tickets for Extreme Midget Wrestling tonight. They, I didn't know they were sold out. That is very unfortunate. Well, I mean, Sorg, the tickets were in short supply. Damn it! Damn it! Uh, Sorg, Sorg, it's not your fault. They're playing a really small house. Listen, actually, it is kind of a small theater. But anyways, <laughs> call me Frank Castle because I'm the fucking Punisher, bitch. Oh, moving on. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I I couldn't help it. Could not help myself at all. Uh, but no, but I, uh, just back to the Exolicious and Joey Ryan thing. I. I thought it was going to be an interesting pairing like from the second I saw who they're up against and mm. I'm so glad it leaned into the way it did mm. because that could that could have gone the other way real real quick yeah but like and that's the other thing it, it, it didn't do the usual thing where it didn't do the gold dust thing where where right. Exolicious is doing is he's doing and thing. yeah and and freaking them out and, and whatever you know this is 2018 you know i well, imagine also, also, um, I, well i imagine joey ryan could turn into the character from doctor who that would literally have sex with anything oh captain joey harkness yeah i'm, yes. I'm down with that i thought it was jonathan no it, it's jack but jack. i'm saying his name is joey oh i see i see what we yeah. did there captain joe harkness yes. i'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. He's he was even a cop, so that kind he of he was. He was kind of a time cop, 
but yeah yeah well, we'll, we'll get to that later because oh. i i've got theories sorg i got okay theories. okay okay i got theories up to yin yang um so sorg but not every show is perfect we know this mm-hmm. not every show is perfect um if you had a malo for this week what would your malo be my malo is this is the part that's great because um it seemed really random that has anything in the last three and a half seasons of Lucha Underground would lead you to believe that Johnny Mundo had a, an empath- empathetic bone in his body. Ah, uh, okay. We're going to get into my theory right now. O- okay. <laughs> because okay, but, but to illustrate, just to spell it out, like, um, yeah. um, you know, having- Johnny, the, the worldwide underground won the yeah. match with the reptile tribe. So Johnny Mundo gets one wish. Yeah. And, and, and wishing Drago to be released to be reunited mm-hmm. with his friend Aerostar, which mm-hmm. Aerostar yeah. coming out with a Johnny with a Mundo uh, uh, headband Head over his mask great. was it's fantastic. So yes, it was the perfect thing. I just it properly on there. Just it's there. Good no, enough. It was, it was absolutely perfect branding. All right. Um. So let's get into my theory right now. I was gonna save until after we finished our gimmicks, but um. <laughs> Sorg. I think johnny mundo is still all in for johnny mundo because he's trying to butter up aerostar mm-hmm. for a very specific reason mm-hmm. i'm assuming aerostar knows where that gauntlet is <gasps> <laughs> This is a long con. And we do have an image of him with the gauntlet. This is a long con. But, or, con. did He's Lucha... Johnny, Johnny Thanos. Johnny Thanos. Johnny, no, well, actually, hold on. You can't just say Thanos. Johnny, Johnny Thanos hand. Johnny Thanos hand. Um, Alex, Alex thinks that he got Aerostar to do the match on the condition that, yep. that the wish was used to free Drago. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, no, I don't think so because Aerostar looked just as surprised as as Taya did. That's true. That's true. I I think I think Johnny. I'm going is, with I'm going with your angle on this. The sap. I I think Johnny's playing the sap, mm-hmm. and he proposed to Taya right afterwards to make him seem even more on the level, and it's just going to eventually like like Aerostar is going to push out Ricky Mundo. From the worldwide, because I th- I think Aerostar being part of the worldwide underground is going to be a little bit of a thing. We see maybe a feud with uh, uh, Ricky Mundo and Aerostar because you're the guy that you're the guy that replaced me and and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I, maybe maybe Ricky Mundo is the Undertaker to Jake the Snake's Jake the Snake at the wedding. Oh, I would assume so. If they don't, if all right, first of all, are we seeing a lucha wedding? I freaking hope so. <laughs> I hope it's that ultimate loot. And I and I hope that it's being it's being played to by Metalachi. Sword, um do you think Aerostar's wedding gift is the gauntlet? <laughs> could be. I could see it. I could see it. I don't know why he would do such a thing. Your end scene is Is Johnny holding the gauntlet. Johnny holding the gauntlet. Fingers his... and you see Lucha season five. Boom! <laughs> yeah, I'm with yeah. it. I'm with it. Uh huh. I'm telling you, if if this season of Lucha, if that bit from the trailer of Johnny wearing the gauntlet is the last scene in Lucha and he snaps his fingers, <laughs> I'm all praise, all hail, all hail. And the then Lucha. half of the roster was gone. Half of the roster's gone. Then. That's one way to explain budget cuts. It's also a way to bring back everyone who is sacrificed to the gods. Oh. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I want Vinny Massaro to get some work. Yeah, yeah. Do zombies eat pizza? Hashtag asking for a friend. <laughs> All right. Um, so my motto this week. Yes, your <laughs> motto, sir. Yes, after my, after my giant theory. Um, me, Malo, it's... Johnny, you don't piss off the doll. Mm-mm. Johnny, you know, like, 
I know you weren't in WCW when Chucky appeared. You do not piss off sentient dolls. That is, is right in the wrestling rule book. I'm sure it's in the WWE one, Sorg. I'm sure it is. Uh, hold on. I'll, I'll check on it here in the WWE uh, yeah. rule book, uh, which I do have handy here just for a uh, moment. Unfortunately, there's no glossary to this. <laughs> there's no glossary for sentient toys. Um, although I, I am very sad to see that the like the back the back fold out is uh, a certificate of achievement for Enzo, Enzo Amore uh, is hereby achieved. Oh, see, that's, a, that's a fake achievement because I've heard you can't teach that. Can't teach that. That's yeah, right. So you, you can't get certified in something that's not teachable. Nope, absolutely not. Exactly. So it's it's all fake. It's all lies. It's all lies, bullshit, and speculation. Fake news. Fake. Hashtag fake news. All right. Uh, Sorg, if you could change one thing about Lucha Underground this week, your combio, if you will, what would it be? That would be that Jake the Snake Roberts is <laughs> part of the reptile crowd, uh, crowd. Yeah, the reptile tribe already. Okay. Like, wouldn't okay. it be great if he was just like daddy? Like if Daga was his son? Oh, I don't know. I was thinking to Cobra Moon. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm I'm with that too. Also, oh, just... is this the same Mariposa? I would assume so. Okay, I, I would assume too, but she. I, I thought she looked different too when we first saw. Maybe her. it's just because of her presentation. <laughs> um. Yeah. She. Okay. All right. So there's an elf in the room, or rather, a butterfly. Uh. And that, that's part of my cambio. That's more part of my cambio, actually. All right. If you're a Mariposa and you're going to walk, shall we say, guns blazing into Antonio Cueto's office. You could say major guns blazing. Ah, yes, you could. Uh, a bit, bit, for those of you who didn't watch, first of all, what the fuck? Watch the underground. Secondly, uh, her boot pretty much. And, and because the internet was out, her boobs were out. It, it was it was a her bobs, her bobs, her bobs were out. Yes, bobs. Yeah. Um. Basically, she, she was wearing a much more suitable attire than what her wrestling attire would. <laughs> well, we're would, talking about the greatness and evolution of wrestling and the May Young Classic over on this side it, of the but, internet. You know what? <laughs> Overtly using her sexuality to gain a to gain a championship match. So hashtag women's revolution. Um, yes, yes. At the forefront, Lucha Underground. Yes. Uh, if you're going to do that, I don't think you have to pay him the money. <laughs> I think she was kind or, of, yeah. Or if you're going to sweeten the pot with money, have him to make a stipulation match. Well, wait, well so he didn't, didn't know, she didn't seduce him. She, she, she I said, think she tried, but then she just. I like, think thought better she was just being successful it. at it, but says, I don't need to do this because I have money for you. Yeah, exactly. Yes, but that's like, a lineup. If, if you're going to do all those things, have, have, have Antonio no, no. make a that's, that's That's, here's the one for this time, and here's a little drop in the bucket for next time, because I'll probably seduce you. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it's I mean, just a little, like, next, you know. Now, now the funny thing would be, is if Marty shows up in Antonio Cuello's office, and does the exact same thing next week. Next week, same Lucha same time. Outfit. Same outfit. Same outfit? Same outfit. Yes. I think it'd be hilarious. Hey, it worked for you. Because hashtag equality. Hashtag equality. Hashtag sorry. equality. Hashtag women's revolution. Hashtag Mothra evolution. Mm-hmm. And by the way, um, I, I no longer refer to Mariposa as Mothra, as I did when she first came on the scene. Oh, that's right, you did. I, I now call her Madam Butterfly. That seems appropriate. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. But uh, the match for her between her and El Dragon a second was fine. Um, I kind of wish she won because El Dragon a second just is not lighting the world on fire for me. I don't know about you, Sorg. Um, no, not really. Like, I mean, I guess someone has to have the gift of the gods, but mm -hmm. I don't know. It was just kind of weird. All right. 
But uh, Sorg, there's another best part of the show this week. There's another best part. Wait, I think I'm trying uh, to remember. Is it the rabbit tribe? It's something to do with the rabbit tribe, and it was almost, almost my word of the week. Was it? Was it the bouncing sound when he was wrestling? Dude, they went full on fucking Looney Tunes. They did go Looney Tunes on that. Like it wasn't just the bouncing sound when he. It was the like when he was doing rabbit rabbit punches. Get it? He was doing rabbit punches to mm-hmm. Matata. Mm-hmm. Um. And poor Mala Suerte finally lives up to his name because he sacrificed to the gods. Um, I wonder if this means we're actually going to get Killer Cross wrestling now. Like if the White Rabbit is going to join them. Mm-hmm. Or if it's the, uh, the black mini that was in the cage that's going to join them. I don't know. Either way, I'm curious. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, just just pretty much a weird overall episode of Lich Underground. It was a lot of fun, and that's why we get into it from week to week. I I still I still really hope that Dario is going to lead a, a tribe of angry zombies against Matanza at the end of the season, like in a zombie vicious sorrow that's like super powered, it's zombie Mala Square Day, zombie Mister Spectacular, like. All of them are like hopped up on zombie strength. By the way, also from the chat room, Alex Miller's out there as well. Uh, a few people popping in and out here throughout the stream. And uh, he says his uh, his new girlfriend loves Lucha Underground. So life a win for him. Yes. I, I've been I've been trying to get my girlfriend to watch Lucha Underground. Hey, check out this thing over here. <laughs> she knows well, uh, what you do, right? Um, yes. Yes, she does. Okay. No, she's looking at me right now holding a cat. She knew you before you did the famous job. Anyways. <laughs> but as uh, Mad Mike, where can people find you? Uh, was there anything we missed on? About no, I this? think that's it. Yeah, I think we got it. All right. Uh, so you can find me at Mad Mike 4883 on the Twitter machine. Also go to at Mayhem Show every Wednesday night. Sometime probably around 11 usually is when I'll live tweet Lucha Underground. Mm-hmm. So look for the hashtag MM. And if I have a, if I have any thoughts worth live tweeting, mostly it was just crying gifts today. Uh, that's usually uh, Thursday morning. Uh, hashtag Sorg Mode on the uh, mm-hmm. Mayhem Show account on Twitter. And of course, we do this roughly sometime Thursday night on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page. So keep an eye out there. Make sure you like and follow that page, uh, so you do get a notification when we do pop up. Just like the Alexes out there on the West Coast joined us uh, tonight. And then, uh, of course, this goes up in the podcast form and video form uh, on the yeah. Wrestling Mayhem Show Master Feed on uh, on the Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcast out there. So please like, rate, and review. And please support our friends at IndieWrestling.us. Uh, some really cool stuff coming up here by the end of the month. And also, you can check out a lot of great stuff um, over there. Uh, at Bro- oh, coming up. Oh, this is Mike. Uh, I, I, this is coming up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, there was a match with Brian Cage in Premier Championship Wrestling in Cleveland. I'm interested. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen on the Slack Rob talking about meeting him. But uh, but yeah, so look forward for that. And there's plenty of other Lucha Underground uh, people. Some guy named Matt Cross uh, and and a lot of those guys. Uh, uh, is Jeremy, the guy that looks like Jeremiah Crane as Sammy Callahan uh, all over IndieWrestling.us digital download. No, hey, VOD. Sword, sword. Hmm. Jeremiah Snake. Snake, <laughs> yes. Thank you, everybody. Until next time, this has been the Mayhem Underground, formerly known as... The Big Week War! This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Trash can, trash can.